sending messages with Axelor's GMP is a fantastic way to build interchain applications. But what if you want to do something like querying that requires two-way communication? Hello, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to send and reply to a message in Axelar's GMP. This is called a two-way call, and you actually pay for the entire transaction upfront. Let's go ahead and dive into the code and see how you can build a two-way call. So what I've got here is the exact same contract that we have in our Axelar GMP video. So after we create a one-way call, uh, we're going to end up with this code. So we've got a constructor that's taking in the gateway, the gas service. We've got the ability to send a message to pay for it with that native gas for contract call. And then we have the ability to execute uh, on the destination chain. So we're going to use this as our starting point today. And let's go ahead and turn this into a two-way call. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out when do we want to actually respond to a message that's incoming. If I just naively always call back the source, uh, I'd create an infinite loop where every message generates another message. So we, we don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple kind of ping pong. And so if you send the message ping, then the contract is going to know it needs to pong. And so this is relatively simple to do. What we'll do is we will go ahead and uh, check. We'll compare the message against a string. So we'll just look for the string ping. Now Solidity doesn't have string comparison. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and we'll create calculate the kekak 2 256 of the ABI and code of our messages. So we've got the kekak 256 of our message, and we're comparing that against the kekak and code of the string ping. So if we've received the message ping, then let's go ahead and call back that gateway and tell it, hey, I want to go to the source contract, source address, site source chain, and respond with the message pong. So let's just say gateway.callContract. We know we want to send the message to the source chain and the source address. And then we were going to ABI encode just the string pong. So just like we were doing message passing before, uh, where we can set any arbitrary message on the destination chain. Now, if we receive the message ping, we will set it uh, as we always do, but we'll also send a reply to pong. So the one magic thing you have to do here is we're actually going to uh, make sure that we are paying at the source for both of those contract calls. So when you pay native gas for contract call, we're going to be paying for the outgoing transaction, the Axelor consensus, the execution on the destination contract, as well as the message back, the new Axelor consensus, and the um, execution on the original chain. So with that, we've actually built our contract, and we, we should be able to do this. So let's go ahead and check the compilation. Just double check our warnings. We should be good there. And now let's deploy this to a couple blockchains. So we're going to use the injected provider. And now I'm going to need to figure out which chains I want to use. So I'm going to use the BNB chain and Avalanche today. So let's go ahead and go to the docs for Axelar, pull up the addresses we need. So let's go into the testnet here. And we've got the gateway as well as the gas service for BNB. And let's go ahead and deploy this. So we won't need these addresses anymore. We're creating brand new contracts. And now we have our Binance contract. And now let's go ahead and switch over to the Avalanche Fuji testnet. Once that's switched over, we'll just copy over the gateway again, we'll paste that here, and we will copy the gas service to deploy to Avalanche. And with that, we should see another transaction going through our MetaMask, this time on Avalanche for contract creation. Perfect. And what we should see on our Avalanche contract as soon as it's created is that we have a message string that's blank. And we'll actually see that that message string is going to be blank both on BNB chain as well as on Avalanche. Is that contract call still pending? One sec. All right, our contract call has completed. So let's save that just in case we need it. And we'll check that our message is going to be blank on both of these. So we got blank empty string. Now we're going to go ahead and send a message from uh, with a couple ETH here to pay for the end-to-end -end tra transaction call. All the extra will get refunded, and we will send the message uh, ping to the destination chain, which is going to be Binance, and the destination address is our contract on Binance. So let's hit Transact. We'll go ahead and pay for this contract call and send the extra gas for the decentralized consensus and the execution on the destination chain. And now what we're going to see is if we take a look at Axlar scan, so let's go to test not Axlar scan, and we find the transaction ID that we just created on Avalanche. We 
we have a call. So we've got first, it's noticing, hey, we've got a contract call that's originating on Avalanche, going to go all the way to BNB chain. What we'll see here is that when we execute on the destination chain, it will actually create a new message from BNB chain back to Avalanche. And then Axler Scan will automatically notice that this is a two-way contract call, make sure that it's doing the correct relaying, and it will even identify that as a two-way contract call. So let's go ahead and pause here. And as soon as this contract call is complete, we'll come back. All right, we are back and we can see that the finality has been achieved on Avalanche. And so the call was confirmed by the Axler network and executed on the destination chain. And we've got this nice little button now that says two-way call. And if we click on that, we can see the corresponding contract call from BNB chain back to Avalanche, which again was confirmed by the network and is being approved and executed. So with just that quick little change in the usage of this call contract method from within the execute method, I was able to send a message and receive a response from the destination chain, all paying for this entire end-to-end -end transaction with a single native gas call. And the last piece that we can show off here is if we jump back to Remix, we can make sure that we are on the Avalanche chain where we initiated the message. Now we can go ahead and check what the message is here, and we should see Pong. So we originated a message to Binance with Ping, and then we came back with Pong, and we have been successful at our two-way call. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and see you in the next one.